Here at Holy Cross, we're seeking to be disciples of Christ. Worshiping God regularly is a primary part of that process. I'm Jessica Nelson, the director of Holy Cross Kids Preschool, and I'm glad to welcome you as we worship God together. If you're participating virtually, please say hello in the comments on Facebook or send an email letting us know who's watching to Carrie Richardson at kari at holycrosschurch.com so that we can connect with you and note your attendance. Following today's service, we will have our second pumpkin patch meeting from 1145 to 1245 in the 100 suite. Anyone at Holy Cross is welcome to participate in these meetings, and we hope that all who count Holy Cross their home church will help us make this year's patch even better than the last. Ready to help kids have a monumental experience this summer? Holy Cross Children is getting ready for a howling good time at Monumental VBS, July 11th through 15th. And we need every person at Holy Cross to make it happen. Be sure to check out the donation wall in the gathering space after worship and pick out a few items you can share with our team. There's plenty to choose from, including things you can loan and stuff you might have in your recycling bin. Then stop by the registration table and find out how you can help us build props or decorate sets beforehand or hang out with the kids the week of VBS as a crew leader or assistant. Plus, registration is now open for rising first through fifth graders, so be sure to claim your family's spot while you're here. Don't forget to keep praying as Holy Cross prepares to help kids and families in our community discover that God is monumental. Holy Cross Men begins a new study, A Man's Guide to the Spiritual Disciplines, this month. All men are dis encouraged to attend Saturday mornings to share in this series designed to guide you through spiritual habits that will strengthen your walk with Christ and help you become the mature believer God designed you to be. For more details on study materials or to register, use the link in the bulletin or find us online at holycrosschurch.com slash men1. Holy Cross children, youth, women's and men's groups meet weekly, providing opportunities for all ages to grow together faithfully. To find out more about these ministries and how you can become involved, access the online bulletin by scanning the QR code located on the seat backs of chairs in the worship space, or by clicking the bulletin link on the holycrosschurch.com homepage. New to Holy Cross? We'd like to get to know you. Please use the online bulletin or welcome tablet in the gathering space to access our connection card and share a bit about yourself so that we can be in touch. We want to welcome you once again to Holy Cross Church. We're glad you're here. Good morning. Let's sing about the goodness of God.
you have done great things, both in the past and you're doing great things now in the present, and you will be doing great things yet to come, things that we are very much looking forward to. Indeed, the answer to our prayer when we pray, and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we have heavy hearts this week. It wasn't so very long uh, ago with the shooting in Uvalde, and then it seems to me every time I turned on the TV this last week, somebody's being shot or stabbed. And these are the things that make the headlines because of the shootings and stabbings seem uh, somewhat unusual, and yet we know that these things are going on in cities in America on a daily basis. And we pray, Lord, for mercy and for deliverance. And some of us are old, old enough to remember that uh, while things happened in schools and people had guns, it didn't ever cross anybody's mind that the way to solve our problems was to go with a gun to the school and shoot people, many of whom we didn't even know, and that that was a reasonable solution. And so we're praying, Lord, that you'd have mercy on our nation. And we're reminded, Lord, that we're not the only nation where these things are happening in the West. Lord, we pray, deliver us. And help us, Lord, to be instruments of your peace. To bring peace to our families, where everything really begins. Peace to our relationships at the church, peace in our relationships at work with our neighbors and everyone we come in contact with. This is what you call us to as kingdom persons, because in the kingdom there will be peace, and the lion will lay down on the lamb, and the child shall play on the, on the whole, at the hole of the asp, and no one shall be hurt. And so may that start with each one of us. As we come to this time, Lord, we, may we remember, even as we just sang your greatness, may we seek you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and worship you in spirit and in truth in a way that you are worthy of worship. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I was just overwhelmed this last week. I don't know about you. I thought, wait a minute, no, 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 no. This is day four of some horrendous crisis event. And California, and New York, and Texas. So be in prayer, and I think the most important thing, because you, you, know, you say, and so what, what can we do? Well, you can be a peacemaker right where you are. But um, anyway, we're glad you're here. <laughs> it is the day of Pentecost. <laughs> and, um, and one thing to keep in mind, too, is that uh, this isn't the first time the world has been in such a shambles. In fact, oftentimes the world is in a shambles and you don't even know it. Uh, but um, God will get us through. But the important thing, and the thing I want to stress to you as a pastor, is for you to be, for me to be, instruments of peace. Uh, where we are. Um, imagine if everybody did that, right? right? Uh, imagine if everybody kept the Ten Commandments. What if everybody didn't steal? Just think of all the money we save on locks and keys and all that sort of thing, right? So let it start with us. Well, anyway, uh, as we, uh, just for those of you who m maybe knew, um, 
uh, the, uh, ch the children and the youth will be uh, leaving at the passing of the peace uh, to go on uh, to do uh, age-appropriate um, uh, programming and before they come back with us uh, to do communion. And the youth will be meeting uh, at the double doors there on uh, pulpit side, and the children will be meeting with their leaders uh, at the double doors, uh, the band side. And just a reminder about communion, uh, that all baptized persons uh, are... Uh, encouraged to receive communion with us. Uh, and if you have not been baptized, if you'd like to come with the rest and make the sign of the cross like this across your chest, we'll give you a blessing because we want everybody to participate in that part of the service who wants to participate. And when it does come time to take communion, just wait and uh, an usher will invite you. As was noted, uh, uh, VBS is coming up. And uh, if you're interested in uh, uh, serving uh, in one capacity or another, and there are uh, various capacities in which to serve, you can go to the church website, hit on events, and then click on the button that says find out more. Uh, I signed up this last week, as some of you have been signing up. Uh, and then also, uh, I think it was, was it the donation, the donation mall? Is that, was it, is that, I got to get that right? So when you come out of the service uh, today, you'll see uh, there on that temporary, uh, that portable wall, there's all sorts of things that you can pick up that, as was said, you might have it at the house or maybe something that you can pick up. And I think actually things are organized so that uh, if you want to go to Home Depot, here's the stuff to get at Home Depot. If you want to go to Dollar Store, here's the stuff you can pick up at the Dollar Store and provide uh, the uh, materials and things that are needed uh, for, for VBOs. Uh, also, as Ms. Rich in the Pumpkin Patch meeting, so we'll see you there. And then tonight at 6 o'clock is the fourth session of the Belonging Course. So if you're on the Belonging Course, we'll see you tonight at 6. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I heard someone say the other day that you can, uh, you can fight your battles through praise and worship. So let's do that.
Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of, as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. 
Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Serene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to the darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. That portion of the Psalter appointed for this day is from Psalm 104. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There have moved the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, and they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You wide your face, and they are afflicted. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. And Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? 
The words that I say unto you, I do not speak on mine own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask me in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. And so, Heavenly Father, as we come to your word, we pray that we would hear not just the words of men, but the words of God. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I want to take as my text this morning that short reading from uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 14. And if you're making use of the Pew Bible, you can find that text on page 1122. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, and beginning at verse 14, which I'd like for you to take a look with me uh, again. Beginning at verse 14. The great apostle to the Gentiles wrote, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our human spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This morning I want to talk about the Spirit's work in the life of the believer. The Spirit's work in the life of the believer. Now truth be told, the Holy Spirit works in many ways in our lives if we're believers in Jesus Christ. But I want to focus on just three as they appear in our text. And the first is, in the life of the believer, the Spirit leads. In the life of the believer, the Spirit leads. Indeed, notice again verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And so Paul says that if we're truly sons of God, it's in the present tense, if we are, and passive, if we are sons of God, the Holy Spirit is leading us. And this is a key characteristic within the true life of the believer, that the Spirit leads us. And if we're true believers, we follow. Now we might ask, and how do we know uh, when we are being led by the Spirit? Well, one of the ways in which we know is when we're experiencing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And the effects and the influence of the Spirit uh, can be seen. He's leading in this way, and we follow. That begs another question, and that is, and so what is the fruit of the Spirit? Well, Paul uh, describes for us the fruit of the Spirit in that famous passage in Galatians chapter 5, and beginning at verse 22, in which he says this, the fruit or the product of the Spirit, when the Spirit is present and the Spirit is leading, in a person's life, in a believer's life, this is what you'll see in their life. The fruit of the Spirit, that thing that the Spirit produces. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. <laughs> when I'm loving. You know, it's an interesting uh, experience that, um, that I had um, Im uh, immediately after my conversion. Uh, prior to my conversion, I always asked the question, and so what can you do for me? 
Uh, and if you couldn't do something for me, I considered you to be completely useless. But then I had this conversion experience, and I go to this meeting where I don't, didn't even know why I was there, and God opened my heart, and I believed, and I said, yes, Lord, Lord, you be my Lord. <laughs> and I didn't know anything, really, very much. But I remember when I went to the service, and before that happened, I remember that I didn't have a very good attitude about the young Christian people that were at the meeting. I didn't like them at all. In fact, I held them in contempt. When I returned the following week after having had this conversion experience, I noticed something that I had never noticed before. As I ascended the steps into this, to go into the uh, house, it was, a, it was a house where the youth uh, met and the pastor had his study and there were some offices in this house and out in California. As I ascended the steps and there was some Victorian home with a big porch and their kids were there, I felt this overwhelming love for them. <laughs> Overwhelming. Overwhelming. That was the fruit of the Spirit. That wasn't the fruit of the flesh. That wasn't Thompson. That was God doing something in me. And perhaps many of you are familiar with that feeling. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And the fruit of the Spirit is joy. In fact, you can't be influenced by the Spirit or be in God's presence, as the psalmist said. In your presence is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The, Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience. See, that's the one where I get a little hung up there. Uh, notice it's, 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 that's, um, that's uh, seemingly, it's deep in. That's when you're starting to get advanced. But I try to remember that, just to, you know, release it. Patience, kindness, goodness. That's what we mean when we say at the end of the service, is service to, be, to be a benefit and a blessing to everyone we meet. That's to be a source of goodness, a benefit. What do you do when you're with people? Do they feel drained by you? Or when you come to, to people, do they feel that you're lifting them up? And sometimes, you know, we play the different role, you know. Sometimes we're the ones that need to be lifted up. Um, goodness. And faithfulness. <laughs> Gentleness, which is another way of saying humility. The Spirit produces humility in us. And self-control. And so when we're being led by the Spirit of God and we're following His lead, these are the sorts of character traits that will be on display in our lives. And so that's the first thing. In the life of the believer, the Spirit leads. Secondly, in the life of the believer, the Spirit inspires. The Spirit inspires. Indeed, notice again, beginning at verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. <laughs> to be a son of God, a child of God, is to be led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery or bondage to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons of God, by whom we cry, by which spirit we cry, Abba, Father. <laughs> And so Paul says that the spirit that we've received as believers is not a spirit that enslaves us. It takes away our freedom. In fact, if, 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 if the, as the scriptures say, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. <laughs> you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. All right. Freedom. True freedom. We think that sin and darkness is freedom. That's bondage. <laughs> If you ever stubbed your toe in the dark, there's an example of it. You can't see where you're going. You don't see things the way they really are. But when you're walking in the light and the Spirit is filling your life and leading you, you have true freedom, or as Archbishop Cramner wrote, and we have it in our own prayer book, to serve you, Lord, is perfect freedom. Or Hans Kug, when somebody said to him, Kug, why did you become a Christian? He said that I might be truly human. That I might really be what God always designed me to be. 
as his creature, to live in communion with him and not walking away. He's the light. To walk toward him is to be enlightened. To walk away is to be in the darkness. And there's nothing free about being trapped in the darkness. And so Paul says that the spirit that we have received is not a spirit that enslaves us, that robs us of true freedom, or a spirit that makes us fearful. In fact, Paul writing to Timothy in his second letter, as we have it in the New Testament, wrote this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. And so the spirit that we have received is not a spirit that enslaves, but, or that makes us fearful. Rather, Paul says, that the spirit that we have received as believers is a spirit that inspires. <laughs> Paul here refers to the Holy Spirit as the spirit of adoption. In the Roman world in which Paul lived, uh, the, the practice of adoption was a central legal matter. Uh, if a, if a, a man uh, uh, owned a, a business or an estate and didn't have children to, in, to, to whom he could, he could leave it, if he didn't have an heir, in many cases he would make uh, one of his favorite servants his heir. He would adopt that servant. That servant would take on his name, and when he was gone, all that belonged to that man would be uh, in, 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 uh, given. Uh, to, the, to the heir, and he would be treated as a, as a full son with all the rights and privileges and responsibilities as if he were his natural-born son. And in the New Testament, especially in the writings of Paul, this concept of spiritual adoption uh, features large. Indeed, uh, Paul says that... Um, that it is by means of spiritual adoption that we are transformed from being merely the creatures of God to becoming the children of God. And so not only in, in Paul's writing, but in, in, even in the Gospel of John, we have this concept. In fact, it's a, favorite, a famous passage. You may be familiar with it. John chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, we read this in John's prologue to his Gospel, the Gospel of John. He says, and he, this is talking about Jesus, the Logos, and he, Jesus, he came to his own, but his own people didn't receive him. Verse 12, but, they didn't receive him, but, but to all who did receive him, yes, Lord, to all who believed in his name, he gave to them the right to become the children of of God. Now we use, we oftentimes loosely talk about everybody's a child of God, and that's true to the extent that everybody's a creature of God. But obviously, there's some, there's some, there's something different about what he's talking here. In fact, uh, when, when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees on one account, he says, "You're of your father, the devil." <laughs> and so we can be creatures of God, but not in the strictest New Testament sense. The apostolic sense of a, of a child of God. Here we have people who were not children of God and they become the children of God. And how do they become the children of God? Through faith, through receiving Jesus. He came to his own and his own received him not, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's adoption. Jesus is the, the son of God the Father by nature. We become the children of God by adoption. We weren't before, and he makes us his children through faith in his son. And so it's by means of spiritual adoption that we're transformed from being mere creatures of God to being children of God. And Paul says that it is this spirit of adoption living within us that prompts us, that inspires us to say something. He prompts us to call God Abba Father. Before my conversion, I never would have, that would have never crossed my mind. In fact, this has something to do with the spirit of fear and, and bondage. Truth be told, I was scared to death of God. 
Now, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have known it because I was a little punk, but. <laughs> oh, there it uh, I was. I'm so glad it wasn't my phone. <laughs> I was scared to death of God. In fact, uh, there for a while, I was having this reoccurring dream. I, I, I don't know what it was. By the way, if you don't think uh, that laws are deterrents for crime, I'm a, I, am a, uh, I am a testimony to that. I oftentimes would count the cost as to what sort of trouble a certain action would get me into. But I used to have this uh, reoccurring dream where I was walking across a bridge. I was in my neighborhood, and there wasn't actually a bridge there, but in my, in my dream, there was this bridge and kind of went over a, a gully. And um, I had done something bad. I got halfway across this bridge, and the bridge collapsed out from underneath me. And I start to be sucked down. In fact, the wind is whizzing past my ears, and I keep getting sucked down faster and faster and faster. And some voice is telling me, and do you know where you're going? <laughs> and I would wake up in a cold sweat. But when the Spirit takes up residence in your life, the Spirit not only leads, but the Spirit inspires and suggests, indeed prompts, prods you to say something perhaps you never thought you would say. Abba, Father. Abba is the Aramaic. In fact, Jesus and his disciples there in the Galilee, they spoke Aramaic. That was something that the Jews, a language that they picked up when they were uh, in um, exile in Babylon. Uh, and, this, and so Abba, Abba means uh, Dada, <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a term of endearment. Uh, in the Middle East, sometimes you hear, you know, the Greeks was talking about Baba. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, an expression of, of endearment that I'm your child and you're my father. And it's, it's filled with confidence. No child says, Dada, Mama, and thinks, uh-oh. <laughs> In fact, if, they're, if it's an uh-oh, it's not going to be Dada, Mama. It might be Mommy, Dearest. But it's not an expression of confidence and endearment. And so the Spirit uh, in the life of the believer leads and the Spirit inspires. Thirdly and finally, in the life of the believer, the Spirit assures. The Spirit assures. Notice again verses 16 and 17. Paul says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit. The Holy Spirit, in other words, bears witness to our human spirit, the immaterial part of us, our mind, our heart, that we are the children of God. And if we are children, then we're also heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs. I don't, this is incredible. And fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. And so the Spirit of God bears witness with our human spirit that we belong to God the Father, that, that we are children. There's that voice of the Spirit inside saying, you belong to him. <laughs> Something's happened in you. You know that. You're experiencing it. You belong to God. He has adopted you. You were in the darkness, he brought you into the light. What did the, man, the, in, what did the blind man say uh, in uh, John chapter 9? I, you can say whatever you want about Jesus if you don't like him. I mean, that's your prerogative. That's your choice if you like. It's a free country. But all I know is this, is once I was blind and now I see. The Spirit bears witness with our human spirit that indeed we are the children of God. And not only that, Paul says, but also he bears witness in our spirit that we're God's heirs. Think about that in the world. Whose heir would you like to be? Some rich person who has lots of things in, in which to, to give? Imagine what it's like and what it means to be an heir of God. God owns it all. <laughs> and when you're his child, 
You become his heir. And everything that belongs to God belongs to you. And not only that, Paul says, and the Spirit of God bears witness with our human spirit that we're co-heirs with Christ. Everything that the Father gives to the Son, He gives to us as co-heirs together with Him. And Paul says, and this is true, if we suffer with Him, which is something that Paul just assumes is the case of every Christian person to one degree or another, in fact, I was having a conversation with a young believer not so long ago, a young man. And uh, I think this subject came up, and he said, I, I want to suffer for the Lord, you know. I said, well, that's easy. <laughs> All you got to do is do what's right. Follow the lead of the Spirit. And somewhere along the line, you're going to come across somebody that feels very challenged by that. And that's going to be, they're going to see that as some kind of an impediment to them getting done what they want to get done by evil means. So all you have to do is be faithful. All you have to do is walk with Him. All you have to do is do the right thing and follow your conscience as it's being influenced by the Holy Spirit and you will, you will have trouble. And then, the, and then the, the, the challenge will be, so now what are you going to do? Are you going to be faithful to him? Or are you going to give in to the pressure, whether it's passive or active aggression? What are you going to do? That will become the test, whether you will be true or whether you will not be true. But Paul, Acts chapter 14 and verse 22, on his second missionary journey, he's going around with Silas, and, and they're, he's going back uh, to those churches that he planted. And he's checking on them and seeing how they're doing and encouraging them to keep the faith. And this is what he says uh, to one of the churches in chapter 14 of Acts and verse 22. Through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. <laughs> Don't be surprised. You, believers at Lystra or Derby, wherever this was, don't be surprised because it is through many tribulations that we must enter the kingdom of God. Or what did Jesus say? In fact, I was visiting a, a guy just uh, the other day in the hospital and, and, and uh, was having some trouble. And I, I quoted this, Jesus' words in uh, John 16 and verse 33. It says about Jesus, and having said these things to the disciples, this was on the night that he was betrayed. He says, uh, in, in me, uh, you will have peace. But then he says, in the world, you will have tribulation. <laughs> in the world, you will have tribulation. Then he said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. When I get down like I was this last week, I remember that. We're in the middle of the story, not the end of it. And what will come of this? I don't exactly know I'm not God, but I'm trusting God to bring it to a good end. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, Paul writing to Timothy said, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. In one sense or another, and there are, by the way, as easy as our life is uh, in the West, and we can go, we're all meeting here, there's no police officers outside going to round us up. There's none of that, but there are many, too many restricted nations in the world where meeting like this is against the law. And the, the groups of Christian people have to move from one place to the next because, uh, you know, the government and the police get wind of it, and so we just have to stay on the move all the time. They get into one car, they drive to another place, they go to, the, and all of that they have to do. And it's against the law to own the scriptures. And so they, 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 they do Wi-Fi at the coffee shops and, uh, and, and, and make the scriptures available through the Wi-Fi until the government finds out about that. And on and on and on. And the church is persecuted as it seeks to carry out the Great Commission because Jesus said, All authority has been given unto me and now go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And to be faithful to, to, to their God, to be faithful to Christ. And because they can't keep silent about the things they've seen and heard, they act contrary to the laws of the lands and the communities in which they find themselves to be true to Him first. 
And so Paul says, the Spirit of God also bears witness to our human spirit that we are co-heirs with Christ if we suffer with Christ. And then Paul says that the suffering with Christ gives way to glory. <laughs> gives way to glory. It's not just suffering and then you die. It's suffering and then you're exalted. Like Christ was exalted. He's the pattern. He empties himself. Becomes obedient to the Father. Even obedient to the point of death on the cross. And therefore God has, what? Highly exalted him. And given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And we are co-heirs with him. In fact, notice that 18th verse, which is not a part of our text, but it's the next verse right after. Verse 18 of Romans 8. Paul, who knew something about suffering. Last week we were talking about him being beaten with rods. And he says in 2 Corinthians that that happened to him on three separate occasions and on and on and all of the other things that he lists. In fact, he told the Galatian churches that he was having lots of problems with them. At the, very end of the, at the very end of his letter, he said, you know, can you make things a little easier for me? He said, it's because I bear in my body the marks of Christ Jesus. It's enough that I have to suffer at the hands of my enemies. Please, don't you make me suffer, he writes <laughs> to the church. But Romans 8 and verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in, 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 in us. What glory? 1 John 3 and verses 1 and 2 gives us a hint at that. 1 John 3 and beginning at verse 1. See, Paul, uh, uh, John is writing. And notice the family language again. That you're the children of God. Notice. See what kind of love the Father has given us. Wow! We're so loved by God, John says. That we should be called what? Children of God. And so we are. And the reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Verse 2. But beloved... We are the children of God now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, when He returns, we shall be like Him. <laughs> we, we will see Him in all His glory, and we will be like Him. We know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He truly is. And so the Spirit leads, the Spirit inspires, and the Spirit assures if we are the true children of God. And if you aren't, and if what I've been talking about doesn't make any sense whatsoever, then maybe you aren't. But maybe that's something you should like to remedy, even today. Again, what did John say? Jesus came to his own, but his own people did not receive him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, <laughs> he gave them the right to become children of God. Will you believe in him and trust him? And call him your Lord. Let us pray. It's the right ordering of things, Lord. We're not God, you are. We're not the creator, we're creatures. In need of redemption, and you're the redeemer. <laughs> In need of sustaining, and you're the sustainer. <laughs> and as Pascal said, that we all have this God-shaped hole within us, and we may try to fill that hole with all sorts of other things, people, material things, and it just never satisfies. We may feel some satisfaction, but even as Mick Jagger said, it, it quickly fades. And so, Lord, um, 
If, if what we've described here is our experience, good. And maybe we might even be a little pricked in our, in our, uh, our conscience uh, that it should be more... Uh, uh, should be our experience more often than, than it is. Or perhaps it's not our experience and never has been. And for those of us for whom it had never has been, Lord, grant us grace to seek you out, to knock, to ask, to call, as you told us to. Because if we knock, you will open. And if we seek, we will find and if we ask, it will be given us. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. stand together and proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We Let us pray for our own needs and those of others silently or out loud. Continue, Lord, in our prayers for our brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted because of their faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, for those who persecute them, that you would deliver them and enlighten them, that they might know joy unspeakable and full of glory. For our brothers and sisters here at the church, we're praying, and for others for whom they've asked us to pray, and all their various different needs, all the details of which you are more than familiar. We're praying, Lord, for Mike, for Lucy, for Brittany, for Francis, 
for Elaine, for Christopher and Anne, for Johnny, Jacob, Jesse, Zeke, and Rachel, for Christopher, Maggie, and Caden, for Randy and Carolyn, for Carlene, Larry, and Jason, for Andrew, David, Christy, Abby, and Grace, for Bob and Mimi, for Olivia, for Marvin, for Joju, Eric, and Tawson, for Janet, for Lois, Lance, and Kara, for Ludmilla, for Bill and Doris, for Al, Carolyn, and Lottie, for Jennifer, for Mike, and for Beverly. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And I want to invite you to pray with me this prayer of personal commitment. If these words are reflective of your own heart, I would in invite you to pray along with me. Almighty and eternal God, so draw my heart to you, so direct my mind, so fill mine imagination, so control my will, that I may be wholly and completely yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use me, I pray, as you desire, and always under the furtherance of your glory and the benefit and the blessing of all those around me, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. And so go in peace, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, let each one of us seek to be a benefit and a blessing to everyone we meet, as we seek also to be ever-growing in love, in our relationship with God, in our relationship with one another, and in our relationship with the world around us. Alleluia, alleluia. You are dismissed. Reach out and touch him, reach out and faith. He's a miracle worker, be healed today. Reach out and touch him, reach out and faith. He's a miracle worker, be healed today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Reach out in faith.